feeling to see so much people here, and it's an awesome job that by organizing, uh, organizing to, to put the conference of this scale. Uh, my name is uh, Ben. I work as a software engineer for for, for FuSource, which is an open source integration company uh, based around the Apache projects such as ActiveQ, uh, Camo, Service Mix, Graph, and other. I mostly work uh, on ActiveQ for the last three or four years and, and other other uh, related projects. I also helped uh, write an ActiveQ in action book. So today I want to talk about uh, a sub-project of ActiveQ called Apollo which is uh, our pitch for the next generation uh, messaging, messaging platform. So we will cover a bit, you know, why we have a separate sub-project, uh, what uh, technologies we put in, in it and uh, features, and talk about uh, a bit about uh, a future development of both uh, ActiveQ and, uh, and Apollo. So why did we start with Apollo? Uh, basically, in the last few years, uh, we see a, a huge rise of, of uh, CPUs with, with uh, high core counts, right? And uh, we try to find find uh, a, a better broker core, core that, that can utilize uh, this, this kind of uh, a hardware architecture on the on the modern pro processors. Uh, uh, ActiveQ 5 branch is, you know, highly used uh, by, by a, a large organization, a lot of customers, so uh, making an experiment on, on a project that finally, you know, uh, has some, some, some great maturity in it, in it uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't feasible. So it's, it started experimenting uh, on, a, on a site which finally resulted in a, in a new broker core which has a, a completely uh, completely different architecture from what we have in, in ActiveMQ 5. So we we decided, you know, to 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 branch to branch it as, as a completely new sub project to uh, have, have a chance for clean start uh, and and have a place to to basically work on all, all new new uh, technologies without uh, without uh, affecting uh, existing existing users users and. And uh, this uh, this new broker core is much more deterministic, scale, uh, stable, and uh, and uh, scalable. So I'll uh, I'll now go to to some of the basic uh, basic ar architecture used uh, in Apollo. Uh, we use something called uh, reactor-based thread model pattern, which, which I'll go in, in, in into in, into the details soon. It's uh, implemented in Scala. Uh, unlike uh, current ActiveMQ, which basically started as a you know open source JMS implementation, and and uh, only afterwards we, we added uh, some other pro protocols uh, to enable messaging from other platforms. Uh, Apollo is protocol agnostic, so uh, inside of, inside of the broker core, everything everything is just you know byte payload and and all all conversions. Serializations are done uh, are done by by basically plugins, and uh, we we did uh, a full REST-based management, uh, which we'll also cover a bit later in, in the talk. So the ce the central part of, of part of the of the broker uh, new broker architecture and, and this react, uh, reactor-based threading model is is uh, implemented in, into the help dispatch uh, project. It, it's a small library, and it, it's basically uh, thread pooling and NIO event uh, notification framework. It's uh, available at uh, uh, GitHub, and it's developed by 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 uh, a few few source. Uh, what basically it is, it, it's a Java clone of, of uh, Grand Central Dispatch. It's a technology developed by uh, Apple for their needs, and it's. It, uh, it's their C++ li library for, for doing this kind of stuff. So we, we started playing with it and uh, find out that you, such a technology would be a great benefit for for the for the uh, uh, broker architecture. So uh, in Apollo, there's 
there's no, no explicit usage of threads, there's no explicit usage of synchronization of threads, uh, and uh, that's, that, that's a huge thing because uh, those synchronization points and, and you know, are, are what uh, slows, slows us down in, in any multi-threaded and highly multi-threaded environment like, like, a, like a broker code. So with how dispatch uh, developers are not concerned concerned with threads, they are just you know submitting their tasks to, to, to some kind of uh, dispatch queues. Similar like you know end user end user developers submit their messages to the to the JMS queues. These are a, 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 a similar programming model. And because now uh, in, in in our application we have a fixed size thread pool model. Uh, it's much, much more deterministic because we, we know uh, for sure, you know, that we will have a, a same number of threads, no matter no matter the law, the number of number of clients, destinations, and everything, and everything in the broker. So th there are two kinds of uh, dispatch queues uh, defined by Hub Dispatch. First is the is, is the global dispatch queue, and we have uh, three of them, you know, separated by by a priority that they're going to use. Uh, and uh, the point is that if you use a, a, a global queue, uh, basically uh, your tasks are executed in non-deterministic order. Uh, so there's no guarantee that one task will be executed uh, before the other, which is okay for the most of the most of the use cases. If you want uh, a, a serial a serial execution uh, for for certain tasks, you can use you know serial dispatch queue. Which is like uh, you know first in first out first out queue and uh, it will you know synchronize execution of the of the sum of the task provided. So the API is really really simple. So basically, what you need to do is you know to get your queue from help dispatch uh, and uh, provide the runnable that you want to run uh, in that queue. In, in, in the bank background, there's a you know fixed side, side thread pool which basically execute execute these tasks. As you can see, we have both Java and uh, uh, Scala APIs. Uh, it's uh, Scala API adding some 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 of those you know synthetic sugar that makes make, makes all this uh, more readable. And uh, as you can see, the, the final bit here is is a syntax basically copied from the original uh, uh, grundlib dispatch library. Uh, there are s some rules uh, that need to be defined for, for the tasks that, that are being written, and those are that uh, your tasks should not block at any time, should be log-free and, and wait-free. So basically are, are really simple operations that can be uh, executed uh, as asynchronously. Uh, this is all, well, you know, great for, for dealing with the, with the general purpose, you know, a task, a task execution. But uh, in the broker, most of, of the time, we, we, we just, you know, read from the network and, and, and you know, get our messages uh, to fail a little bit of, of processing and, and then push them on, on, the, on the other side. So there are a lot of network program, programming. And anyone who, you know, dealt with NIO knows how, how, how those, uh, NAO is not a you know pretty API to programming, so uh, what uh, Hub Dispatch provides for us is easy, uh, easy framework for for, for for nice and easy uh, handling of NIO NIO events. So basically, what we need to do is you know create our NIO channel like, like we we did in 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 a regular application, create a queue that, that uh, we want to to uh, handle these events. Uh, then create a dispatch source, which, which is a, a new concept, uh, which get the reference for the you know channel queue and the operation uh, we're interested in. So every time that you know uh, an NAO event is ready, we, we provide an event handler, which will be you know just uh, uh, handling handling that that NAO event. And in this case, you know we just you know read the buffer. And, and just print it uh, on the standard uh, standard uh, output. And finally, you know, we just need to, to st start this, you know, dispatch source working. And that's basically it. This is this is all all you need 
uh, uh, for you know successful handling on, of NIO events in a in an application that deploys uh, hub dispatch. So uh, to conclude with, with this topic, I mean uh, we, we found it very very uh, very good uh, fit for for the for the broker. Uh, architecture and basically, I mean, it will be a, a good uh, fit for any application that has a similar kind of architecture. So it's good for for end -end handling NIO events. It's good for you know uh, uh, leveraging you know banner API for developers to deal with multi-threading and then the, then the st standard threads and, and and synchronization points. And we found uh, some uh, very good performances. Uh, Comparing to to to, to the current Vectin Q5 and, and other open source messaging messaging brokers. So uh, when we started working working on Apollo, at the same time uh, we started working on, on, on a new version of the Stomp protocol, which which you, which will I cover a, a, a little bit later. But so this is basically an overview of all protocols. Uh, 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 supported by Apollo, and, and as I said before, uh, it's it, it's completely protocol ag agnostic uh, in, in this version. So currently we, we pro uh, support Stomp 1.0 and 1.1. We support MQTT protocol, which is a very interesting protocol, which we'll cover in more details a bit lately, and the OpenWire protocol, which is a, a JMS protocol supported by by ActingQ and. We, we partially support this. And I will talk about this uh, at the moment, and it, it provides a basic uh, compatibility with, with, with the current ActingQ clients. Uh, what's more interesting is that uh, transports are, are pluggable, so we can use any of these protocols on, on any of available transports like TCP or UDP or WebSockets or secure WebSockets or, or SSL. So you, you can just mix and match them uh, as you see fit in your environment. And finally, uh, unlike Actium Q5, uh, we have something called protocol detection, which means that uh, all this protocol can use a single port. So when when a client connects, we will you know do some some ne negotiation with the client and and uh, see see what, what protocol uh, should be used. As I said, you know there are multiple transports supported uh, and and are easily pluggable. So. Uh, when we started working on Apollo, uh, in the same time, we started working on, on a new version of the Stomp protocol. So, so initially, Stomp uh, Apollo was just the first implementation of uh, of the broker which implements uh, Stomp 1.1 protocol. And uh, in my opinion, Stomp is very very interesting protocol. It's a simple text oriented messaging protocol, which is something we define like you know HTTP for the messaging realm. So it's very easy. It's all based on the text packages, uh, very very much similar to the HTTP, you know, get and put fr uh, frames uh, uh, that are used. Uh, we just have a large large number of uh, of uh, frames uh, because we need to s to support all kind of uh, the the messaging patterns and, and and combinations that people want to use. And because it's very easy, uh, it's a very easy. Uh, and simple protocol, it's easy to write clients and servers. So there are tons of existing clients, you know, like C, Ruby, uh, J, even even you know JavaScript or the web web sockets. Uh, there are uh, clients that, that can can do that. Uh, and you know, it's 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 a perfect uh, perfect uh, uh, protocol to to provide us with ability to uh, to you know connect different platforms like uh, Java and Ruby applications in, in purely a synchronous way uh, using a messaging broker uh, in, uh, in the middle. And it's also you know, uh, supported by all major open source uh, message brokers like you know, ActingQ, RabbitMQ, and CorrentQ. And uh, I know about a bunch of others that are you know, like really simple stone, stone brokers written in Python or, 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 or any kind of those kind of environments. So, if, if you take a look at this frame example on the right side, so that's the example of, of the frames sent be, between brokers and clients. And as you can see, uh, it's very similar to HTTP, as I said, you know, 
it can transport binary bodies, but you know it's 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 basically uh, a text-based protocol, and we have a, a frame command for every important messaging concept, like you know connecting to the broker, sending a message, sub subscribing to the destination, acknowledging a message, and so forth. Uh, in 1.0, in, in the first version of protocol, we we saw some some kind of things that we need to add. Sorry, and that's why we. Uh, uh, worked on, on the 1.1 version protocol, which provides a few more extra features, like you know protocol negotiations, like you know sending hard bits between clients and, and, and brokers, so that we can you know be sure that uh, that the connection is still alive. Uh, actu actually, you know, uh, necking the message, meaning you know that we specifically don't want to pro process this message, and support for vir virtual hosts. Which meaning that a single broker can can uh, can operate on multiple hosts, similar to to the web service. Polo implements both 1.0 and 1.1. Uh, these are some uh, because uh, Stone Protocol doesn't define anything about you know uh, this destination syntax and anything like that. So we, we provide a support for you know queues, which is you know. Uh, uh, Load balancing messages and topics, which, which is uh, you know pub sub messaging. Also, we provide support for durable subscrib subscribers and uh, uh, support for uh, reliable messaging, which means that you know uh, we can guarantee that uh, message message will be delivered from the producer to, to the consumer, no, no matter if there there are some you know broker failures, network failures, or or, or, or any kind of other failures in, in between. And to support it. Uh, we need we need two additional concepts which are basically not covered with the with the, with the specification. If you take a look up there, you will see that we have a persistent header sent to true, which which means that uh, a broker will save the message in the local store when we when, when it uh, receive the message, and also the receipt uh, the receipt header uh, uh, means that we, we want to use a, a, a synchronized send. Which means that the broker will receive a message from the uh, from the producer, uh, save it in, in its local message store, and then send a receipt back to, to the to the producer. And only when the producer receives this this kind of the receipt, it, it can you know move on and says you know I, I know that that this message is uh, you know safely stored on, on on the broker store and and can be reliably uh, uh, sent to the consumers. Uh, there are a lot of more uh, messaging fe features provided by, by Apollo. Basically, I don't know how much of you are using uh, the current ActiveQ, but all, all, all basic features that, that you expect from a messaging system, like you know, message expiration, queue browsing, temporary destinations, e e exclusive queue subscriptions, and, and uh, message selectors, and all that kind of stuff are are supported uh, with Apollo and, and, and its implementation implementation of the Stone protocol. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we provide support for, for the MQTT uh, protocol, which is basically implemented as a, as a, as a uh, external plugin. And you, you can find it, find it in, in this uh, GitHub uh, uh, project provided by QSource. Uh, this protocol is, is, is very interesting because it's, uh, it's focused uh, on machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communication and it, it, uh, it uses very, very small uh, overhead on, on the actu actual payload of, of the message. So it's, it's designed for usage in low bandwidths, uh, in un unreliable uh, networks and, you know, uh, because it, it, it's a binary, small binary protocol, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the minimal message that you can send with MQTT is just two bytes, so so it's 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 ideal, you know, for uh, for embedded devices, you know, and and uh, and all, all those kind of you know environments environments that uh, 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 that you know we care about the, the network bandwidth and and the the, the actual footprint uh, footprint of the the uh, of, the, of the client, uh, and as you can see on this graph, this is some kind of the prediction uh, about you know uh, message to message 
uh, machine to machine uh, commu uh, communication in, in the future and it's predicted that you know soon all the fridges and all the all, all the devices not, not not just you know our smartphones uh, we all need to communicate to each other and, and uh, this is one of the, the protocols that, that that will allow that it's also implemented by websphere MQ and and mos mosquito brokers so if you have that kind of the use case that you, you really care about this, this kind of stuff or, 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 or need, need to work in this kind of environment, uh, this is the thing to, to look at. And uh, uh, this protocol is now also available in uh, ActiveMQ 560 that, that was released uh, a, a few, few weeks back. Uh, for the JMS API, uh, uh, we use uh, a number of stuff. There's an inter interesting project uh, that uh, implements uh, a JMS API client over, over the Stone protocol. Uh, it also uses uh, a half dispatch for, for its, its local, uh, local uh, architecture. And here you can see, you can see uh, uh, an example of how to you know, establish a connection factory, create connection and and uh, you know, after this point, it, it, it's just a regular JMS API you, you would use with, with any other client. Uh, as I said earlier, we partially support uh, uh, OpenWire. OpenWire is, is, is the first native protocol implemented by ActMQ. Basically, you know, JMS just specifies you the API you, you want to use, but any, every time you need to go on the network or on the disk or, or serialize this message, you need some kind of the uh, wire protocol. And uh, OpenWire is, is our protocol. So uh, it, uh, we have a Java client. We have also an NMS and you know, C-sharp and C++ clients. Uh, and uh, Apollo currently uh, provides all the, so to say, the, the basic uh, basic features. And there are a couple of features that, that are still not still not implemented, like you know distributed transactions, like you know network or broker style clustering, or you know pooling uh, pooling consumers. But they are coming. Uh, the next to next topic I want to cover is uh, a level TV store. It's a new store uh, uh, available in Apollo and also now available in uh, ActiveMQ 560. Uh, basically, uh, Apollo uh, ships with two two stores. One which one which uh, default is level DB, uh, and we have also the the base 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 store. Stores are used, you know, to to persist messaging messages when you when you uh, uh, want a reliable messaging, messaging, and also uh, we persist. Uh, we put uh, non-persistent messages in, in the store when uh, we need to swap them out of the memory. Uh, and also, Apollo uh, 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 provides uh, a new feature called delayed writes, which is uh, a new feature which uh, which uh, provides a, a good performances. And uh, I, I am not sure have a time here to, to discuss it further, but you should look at it. So what's the level DB? Uh, it, it, it's a project, uh, it's, it's a Google project. It's a fast key, key value storage library, which uh, provides, uh, provides, us, provides us with an ordered map of string keys and str uh, string uh, values based on, on uh, SS, SS, SS tables and, and uh, LSM trees. Uh, it's very efficient uh, for storing large number of key value pairs, uh, and which, which should be processed, uh, you know, with a high throughput in sequential read write, write or workloads, which which is exactly what we need for uh, uh, an index uh, for for the message store. Uh, basically, you know, message store. Uh, usually have two parts. We have a, uh, a message log or journal where we put a, an actual payload uh, of the message, which is very fast to write to, right? So we just append everything to the journal. But for reading, we, we need a, a kind of the index so that we can later you know, find the message in the journal and, and you know, read it to, to send it to, to the consumer. Uh, so 
Akin Q5 and Kaka DP store in Akin Q5 uses a P3 index, which is, you know, nothing wrong with that. It, that, that uh, you know, up to a few years back was, uh, you know, an, um, a traditional approach to these kind of problems. Uh, but using uh, uh, using um, a, a technology put in, into a level DP uh, gets much more performance. And you know it's it's important to say much much better performance for this kind of you know sequence read write scenario, which is what what we do with messaging. We, we don't read data you know randomly. We just you know use our just first in first out. So we just want, want to read index uh, in, in in a sequential order. So uh, level DB is a C C plus plus library. So there's no there's no client server su support. It's, it's not a pro you know project that you're gonna install on the server and connect from or to it from the from the client. It, it's it's meant to be uh, embedded in, in, into applications. And uh, additionally, it uses a, a snappy compression to, to to have a you know smaller footprint on the on the disk. Uh, we use uh, a JNI driver. Uh, to, to the level DP store on the Linux and, and OS X environments, uh, and fail back to, to pure Java implementation of, of, of uh, level DP store on uh, other platforms. On other platforms, you can also uh, consider using a PDB store. Uh, the only thing about PDB store is uh, that it's not uh, PDB is, uh, is is Oracle technology, which is not open source. You, you must know, go on, on its site, uh, you know, accept the agreement terms and download it. So we cannot distribute it automatically with, uh, with Apollo. Uh, level DB also supports uh, our application so we can get a, a, a high level ability store, which we'll, you know, uh, talk a little bit later about. And it's a default store in Apollo and it's now uh, also available for uh, Apache Actin Q560. Some of the uh, you know, comparison uh, between LevelDB and the current KHDB store. Uh, basically, LevelDB is is faster. It maintains uh, fewer indexes. Uh, it, it makes uh, a, a lower number of uh, you know IO uh, IO operations uh, and uh, provides uh, a concurrent read access. So all this things add to the to the performance and, and you know uh, the stores are basically one of the one of the you know uh, places in the broker when, when things go slow because uh, writing to the disk is always is always gonna hit you uh, with the performance uh, it also provides uh, its status via JMX which is good so we can easily monitor it uh, it and also su yeah, supports uh, our replication. So, how how will the BHA version works? Basically, uh, it will work with any Hadoop-based file system, uh, uh, and uh, so message log is always mirrored to, to, to the a a a uh, HDFS. So when we write, we, we sync on on HDFS file instead of the local file. That, that's part you know using a journal. To, to write an actual message. Uh, the good thing about level DB that once the level DB uh, index is on the disk, it's immutable. So it's very easy that, uh, to you know just copy those uh, those SST files uh, on check checkpoint to the to the HDFS. So once we have a master fa failure, uh, when st slave bro broker you know starts, it will uh, get. It uh, message log. It will get all the uh, uh, you know uh, SSD files fr from the HDFS, and it will you know continue uh, recovering like it's it, it, it's working with a regular regular file file system. Uh, one thing about uh, all this kind of stuff is that you know uh, master slave election of of the broker uh, needs to be done externally. So we must prevent uh, uh, multiple brokers uh, from uh, using the same HDFS, HDFS path. The usual solution for this uh, is, uh, you know, Apache Zookeeper, which uh, which is a good tool for implementing uh, 
uh, a distributed locking system, and we also have a, a pr project that, that recently has, has been uh, has been released. It's called the Fuse Fabric, which uses zoo, internally Zookeeper and which is used to uh, to centrally provision and configure uh, all kind of all kind of uh, Java Java applications. We, we use it to, uh, for cloud deployments of, of all our all our uh, integration software, so it, it can work with with, uh, uh, with Apollo as well, and, and can be used, you know, as a master election uh, strategy for for uh, HA database. As I said, uh, the other option is B two B store, so it's not Apache Apache license, so you need to get it. Uh, Externally, it's a pure Java implementation for the systems uh, where, we can, where we cannot use level, level DB. It's a uh, very robust, and, but uh, uh, it's and it supports you know advanced features. Uh, but it's, we haven't been working that hard on it like 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 we have on um, on uh, level <coughs> level DB. So the final. Section I want to cover is some cool features that are coming in, in, into uh, into Apollo. First, we have a, 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 a JS uh, authentication. So basically, we, we can use any ter third party J JS login model uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with Apollo. It ships with uh, with security enabled by, by default, uh, based on on a, on a file based you know configuration and, and Property files. We also can support uh, 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 IP whitelist and blacklists and, and you know SSL, SSL certificates. And uh, for environments that need it, we can provide uh, a guest login support. Uh, after authentication, all becomes authorization, right? So we have a fine-grained access control, uh, so we can determine who can you know. Uh, administer or you know consume or send and receive messages from certain destinations and all all of the broker resources like you know destinations certain connectors and, and the broker itself uh, can be secured in this way and you can see this here uh, a simple example of, of, of how, how to do it and and uh, of course like in ActiveMQ we can support the wildcards uh, for easier easier uh, configuration. Uh, also, one thing uh, people usually like, and that's uh, uh, the configura runtime configuration updates. So all configuration files are watch, watched, and and uh, you know changes are applied at the runtime. So you don't need to restart the broker uh, to 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 apply any change to the configuration. And that, that uh, affects, you know, uh, the main broker configuration, all the security files, and also the, the, the logging uh, settings. Uh, uh, finally, uh, for Apollo, we, we opted for the uh, pure REST management at the, at the moment. Uh, we will add support for the JMX later, but uh, for now, you can just easily, you know, grab all the statistics from the broker using the using the pure pure uh, REST management. So it's very easy for DevOps people to just you know script their uh, their commands and everything you know using curl. And uh, people usually uh, like these kind of things. You know, everything is all the data are you know J JSON enco encoded. So it's very easy to. To, to you know write scripts that, that can get you all, all you need uh, from your broker. So, uh, what's the future of Apollo? First, this is uh, this is where, where has it been so far? Uh, here is missing one release we did last month. It's one point point three so far. So as you can see, it's 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 an active project. So. Uh, we tend to 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 release every 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 month or so. Uh, uh, as I said, you know, we started Apollo as an 
uh, as a playground for, for, the, for the next, next generation of, of the broker. And uh, hopefully we, we want to base uh, the next, next uh, ActiMQ6 uh, on, on, on Apollo Core. So there are some, some stuff uh, that are missing in Apollo. There are some new, new features that are only only available in Apollo. So over the next, I, I hope next year, we will get to much more uh, to the state where, where we will have uh, a much better parity between the features in one uh, one, one or, or the other. So all the cool, cool features that are developed in Apollo are, all are being you know uh, uh, moved to ActiMQ, like you saw with the, the level DB store and uh, MQTT protocol. But, and at, at the point when, when Apollo uh, have all, all, the, all the things that, that uh, people need for, from uh, ActiMQ 5, uh, we can, you know, thinking about, you know, releasing ActiMQ, Apollo as, 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 as ActiMQ 6. As I said, you know, we didn't want to, to make big, big changes to, to, the, to the stable ActiMQ 5 broker, so, so Apollo was the way to go. There will be, you know, a bit more work uh, on all, all that kind of stuff, you know, maintaining two separate projects in, in the next year or so, but uh, in my opinion, it will, it will, uh, it, it will, uh, it, it will, you know, be a good thing. So there's a ton of interesting work ahead, so everybody that's interesting in, 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 in this kind of stuff, you know, you can always, you know, join the mailing list to, and, and help. Thank you. Other platforms you can use any other store and it will work. It won't work if, uh, it will work. You, you can use you can use pure Java implementation of level DB, so it should work. It, it the same. It's just you know it's all the new project, so we haven't put that much work in the pure Java implementation. So it probably needs some hardening, and you know, give it a couple of months, it will be as stable as JNI implementation. So you can use level DB in, in any kind of the environment. So it just you know. The default JNI is is on currently only supported by by Linux and OS X. Uh, okay, and second question: I, uh, We are using ActiveMQ, and I can say to you that ActiveMQ is magic. Uh, it uh, does not work out of the box. You have to configure it. You have to know because it's fully documented. For example, I can provide you a simple example. We need a uh, large prefix size. Okay, I look in the internet, and as I say. Uh, specify prefix size, I specify in the GUI, I can see the prefix size is applied, but prefix is still not done. Then I put it in it and start thinking why it's not. Okay, I have memory settings there to change it. Okay, it's a little bit more. Next time, why, why it's not? Uh, uh, the problem is, I, I, I know. Magic, so the the problem is uh, with a system like ActiMQ, uh, with messaging, there are tons of use cases. So, and everybody needs something different. And we try to you know, provide a general messaging, messaging platform is a complex thing. So one, up, one use case is completely different from, from the other use case. So that's why it, it, it's a complex thing. Yeah, it, but uh, it, the problem I can see is that uh, I can't know why the GUI in this state. It simply don't tell me why it does not send yeah. more. So what, what can I say, you know, join the mailing list, you know, write all, all, all your, Recommendations, you know, we'll, we'll love to hear feedback from the users. So open a Jira ticket, we'd like to work on that. I mean, it's just, you know, a huge project, a, a code base is, 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 is very huge there. You know, we always need an extra help. So we want to help, just, you know, we need to, to hear this kind of feedback from you, and so. By the way, do you have already a GUI administration or only a REST base? Uh, for for ActiMQ? For uh, Apollo. Apollo. Uh, what, what do you mean by GUI administration? Well, web uh, administration for Apollo. Yeah, yeah, it comes. It basically, 
uh, how we did it, it's, it, it's, it's a complete API in, in JSON, like I showed, and the web uh, GUI is just a layer on, on top of it. So it, it, he, the web layer actually uses the, the REST API. It, 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 it's a cool thing, you, you, you can check it, check it out. Uh, 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 clustering, right? Uh, so that's one of the things uh, that they show that it's not implemented yet. So clustering is not there, hopefully coming in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, what can we easy do is just to, you know, uh, to, uh, copy everything uh, we have in ActiveMQ. But we want to, to use this opportunity because you know, uh, clustering in ActiveMQ works right. We see some shortcomings when people try to deploy hundreds of brokers in, in a very complex environment. So we try to use this opportunity. We have a clean sheet of paper just to, you know, think it through and see if, if we can done it better for Apollo. So I hopefully, you know, in the next few months, we'll, we'll start working on it, you know. So, you know, Thank you. keep tracking the news and, and, and we'll certainly, you know, tell you about it. Yeah, so, uh, so what are the numbers like? Uh, how much I can uh, provide you, there's no, so here, uh, go to this link. Uh, we, we have a, 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 a few. How many in one so, so basically, uh, there's a whole uh, GitHub project that uh, that's just a, a stomp uh, benchmark call. So it, it tests all the brokers uh, for uh, all, all kind of, uh, you know, uh, scenarios like, you know, uh, publish subscribe with, with this number of, of consumers, this number of producers. So you can see some numbers there, run, or, you know, ran on, on a certain machines for the all open source uh, uh, brokers that implement Stomp, Stomp, or you can, you know, just uh, download it and, and, and run the test in your environment. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, hopefully soon. So what, what I want to say to the folks, you know, if you're using ActiveMQ5 and you're happy with ActiveMQ5, we are not happy with ActiveMQ5. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it with, with it, you know, for, for, for a while. So, you know, uh, because uh, these, these kind of things, you know, we have uh, our hands hands full, you know, so uh, hopefully, yeah, JMX support and, and uh, clustering are, are, are the top priorities for, for this, this, this kind of stuff, you know. Question. Uh, what's your overall opinion? Is it production ready? Do you, do you think? It, do you have any live implementations? Any we, we have a couple, yeah. But uh, it, it's a new project. I mean, it took us, uh, you know, four years to to, to to build all the, you know, little things in in ActiveMQ. So the best thing, you know, download it, test it, you know. That, that's advice for for you know every software you, you, you should use, you know. I mean, ActiveMQ5. I mean, ActiveMQ5 and Apollo can be embedded in, in, in any Java application, and that, that's that just this, you know. Yeah, but it's not easy, like for example, with uh, Formus Q. Formus Q is just a couple of libraries you embed and run. Yeah, you have ActiveMQ O jar. You put it there. It says you know broker service, broker service start. There's your broker. I mean, yeah. I mean, we use it like that for unit testing. We have a. a Thousands of unit tests that just you know embed the broker, start the broker, do all the thing, and, and so I, I mean uh, it's easy to integrate with Spring. It, it's easy to integrate in na native J Java code. If you have any other ideas, how can be better? As I said, you know anybody have any kind of feedback, any kind of ideas how to improve things? We are you know looking forward to your response. And as far as I understand. Uh, we have, uh, you mean on a 
Apollo? Oh, well, not Apollo as a project, no. Uh, but when ActiveQ6 is ready, that will be uh, embedded in uh, ESB. But ActiveQ comes with, with Camo, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.